Ladies and gentlemen, today we're gonna to be reviewing my 2014 Nissan 370Z Nismo. Let's get started. Let's start with that feature. It's a manual car from 2014 with a push to start. So guys, I've owned this car for about three months now and this is just gonna be my personal experience and my personal opinion on the 370Z Nismo. I'm sure a lot of you guys are experiencing this right now, but due to COVID reasons, obviously, the manufacturing of car parts has been delayed months and months, so I have a very small list of stuff that's been done to the car. The car is wrapped in a Nozitex Lava Orange. Another cool feature is I had this roof wrapped in a protective film finished in gloss carbon fiber. The car's exhaust system concludes of a Megan Racing Y-pipe and a Tomei cat bag. Oh boy, does this thing sound good. Beauty. The car is powered by a 3.7 liter V6 and those tend to be extremely raspy, but what I've found is this exhaust system completely changes the tone of the car. The 2014 370Z Nismo is the final year they made this car with these cotton seats. Am I a fan of how they look? Absolutely not. Am I a fan of how they feel? Absolutely. I had Vicres install this gloss carbon fiber and leather steering wheel with an RPM gauge on it. We got some fans. Okay. He wants me to pull over to take a picture. Fuck it. It's not like I'm filming a 2014 370Z Nismo review or anything. Super cool kid, Rodrigo, if you're watching this, what up? <laughs> the Nismos come with this extremely stiff suspension setup that I'm not really a big fan of, especially since I don't really track my cars. And all the other reviews I've watched on this car are just people complaining about how you can't daily the car and how it's not daily drivable. Blah, 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 blah. The coolest feature on this car, in my opinion, is the auto rev match. I was not aware that 2014 Nissans came with auto rev match. If you, for some reason, don't know what that is it's pretty self-explanatory auto rev match it automatically rev matches your car which means when i downshift the car i don't need to press the throttle now to show you guys an example of the auto rev match i'm in third gear right now i'm gonna press the clutch in foot away from the gas we're gonna go down to second gear and it'll automatically rev it up for you you guys should see me on the freeway exit i do a six five four three two one <laughs> Now the one little flaw I found about this is when I pop it into neutral and give it the little neutral shake, the car thinks you're going to first or second gear and it'll automatically rev match you up to five, 6,000 RPM and it has happened in front of cops before. If you live in California with a loud exhaust system, I highly recommend you turn it off. That's fucking nasty. Sorry to interrupt, look how fucking nasty that thing is. <laughs> Don't get me started on this audio system. I've owned cars from Hyundai Velocers all the way up to the Audi R8 and this has one of the best audio systems I've heard. I've only had this car for about 2-3 months now and as you guys can tell by that front lip, we've got some serious damage here. Let's just say this front Nismo lip is supposed to sit like this, but... It doesn't. So I may have driven into a curb and the front lip got folded underneath the car, possibly. Suspension wise, I believe the Nismos are about half an inch lower than the base model 370Z, but my mistake was I went with the 18 inch wheels compared to the OEM 19 inch wheels, and now we have this nasty wheel gap. So if you do want that nice tuck fitment, I highly recommend you stick with the 19s or just slam the car to the floor. Now, there are two generations of 370Z Nismos. This one right here is a 2014, which means it was the last year of production for the first generation Nismo. In my personal opinion, I really love the first generation Nismos just because of the whole body kit of the car. I personally love how the bumpers on the first generation look. It just matches the curvature of the car. It looks a lot, lot better in my personal opinion. And the rear end is just so wide. I love this rear bumper. And the first generation actually comes with this cool ass wing. Pretty self-explanatory in here. This is what's called an engine here with my carb legal intakes. Now the main differences I know between the Nismo and the base model concludes of the suspension, the extra little 20-30 horsepower, and those certain little Nismo pieces you get on the car. Is that worth it? I don't know. You're essentially paying double what the base model is worth for these certain little few additions. Now could you buy a base model and just put these aftermarket Nismo parts on? Absolutely, but it will never have that Nismo in the title of the car. Now will the Nismo retain more value than a base model? Absolutely, in my opinion, I think a Nismo is a collectible car that's eventually going to increase in value by significant amounts but it all depends on how much money you're willing to spend and my knowledge on the pricing is about 10 to 15 thousand for salvage 370s 15 to 22 or so for clean titles and 32 to 40 for the nismos so right, that's the perfect sequence. 